Okay, guys. Um, yeah, we're gonna do a quick patch review. I don't know how much time I'll use on it. I'm gonna go with a quick, educated estimation of about 32 minutes and 59 seconds. Uh, it's not really a hero patch at all. It's like macro changes, items, maps, economy. Hero kills base XP increase from 40 to 100. This is how it should be. It, it was dumb anyway before. Like you killed a level one hero, he gave less experience in a lane creep. That's actually insane. Neutral stacking support bounty increased from 35% to 40%. Honestly, when I read 35, I was, I was already surprised that it's 35 and it was increased to 40. I think this was pretty good. Okay, mid lane creep cams change from small to from medium to small. So the creep cams next to mid lane, you know, the one on the right, the one on the left, for both the sides where you had like all the medium stuff, they're small cams now. Which is kind of interesting. It means that you can kill them faster, so maybe something Icefrog is trying to do is that you kill the camp and then you still have time to make a move. So they remove the Prowler camp, the Ancient camp, which is... I'm not sure why this happened, I guess they were very annoying to deal with. This means that Magic Heroes cannot farm Ancients, you know, at least um, when you played like Storm, Bad Rider... Shadow Fiend, Leshrac, if you saw this camp on the Ancients, you would just kill it real quick. Now, if you play these heroes, you shouldn't even bother to look at the Ancients. The outposts can no longer be stolen by the other team until they kill one of your Tier 2 towers. So as we all know, Tier 2 towers are currently a pain in the ass to kill. So this gives more meaning. Outposts now reveals enemies channeling it. Didn't it always do this? All lane creeps now avoid hero aggro until they are near enemy creeps, neutrals, or within 1550 range of their tier 1 tower. This act, this active, this is active until the siege unit, unit spawn at 5 minutes. 1550 range should be soon if it allows you to aggro the first wave. Yeah, so here, this is 1550 range of the tower. You cannot cut creeps before this, before this spot. I'm a, I am a, I'm a fan of this. I'm an only fans of this. Leave game, toxic streamer. Okay, so overall I think this is a good change. I also like the outputs change and I like the economy change. So, so far, uh, Kezu approved patch. Courier movement speed is reduced by 15% while carrying consumables. So the courier has 290 move speed. Let's put a salve on it and he becomes a fucking, he becomes a snail. 246. Look at this. Um, tier 1 towers attack speed increase, so this is what I talked about earlier. They attack faster, but they deal less damage, which means the last hitting on the tower will be different. Uh, tier 2 towers is the same story, they increase the attack rate and they increase the attack speed, but they lower the damage. The DPS overall is the same of the towers. But reminder that they deal less damage and attack faster, so melee heroes and vanguard is a lot stronger against towers, because they don't hit you less often with high damage, they hit you more often with less damage. So damage block is a lot stronger. Uh, all pick drafting has been reworked. Each team now picks two heroes per round before they are revealed rather than just one. The final round is a single selection. So instead of five times one, it goes double, it goes double pick, double pick, one pick. Okay. All pick hero band count, all pick first two rounds have extra seconds. Nice, I love using more time in my drafting. Captain's Vault band count has changed from 411 for the three band phases to 232. Captain's Vault duration per pick and band reduced. Captain's Vault first pick changed. First pick phase is. Wait. Captain's Vault first pick phase is changed from Radiant Dire Dire Radiant to Radiant Dire Radiant Dire. Assuming Radiant is first pick. Okay. Radiant is first pick. So instead of Radiant double pick, second pick, first pick, you go to. First pick picks, second pick picks, first pick picks, second pick picks. So you don't have the double pick anymore from second pick. Huh. That, you, had to, you had to kind of pick combinations or heroes that make sense when you had double pick here, you know? You had the, when, you, when you're the second pick team here, you wanted to kind of pick like two open heroes or heroes that make sense of each other, you know, like Mars Phoenix, team fight combos. Because the strength of first pick is usually, usually the way drafting goes with first pick is you always get to respond to the second pick team. Because as you can see here, Radiant picks first and their first pick. So the first pick team starts the draft, then you see two heroes and then you get to respond. In the second phase, the second 
pick team starts again. So they pick their third hero, then you pick your third hero from first pick. They pick their fourth hero, then you pick your fourth hero. But here, instead of first pick getting to respond, it's actually second pick getting to respond twice. This will change competitive quite a lot. Okay, item changes. Necronomicon. Yeah, makes sense that you list it first. Most stupid item I've ever seen in my life. Everyone and their entire family could buy a Necrobook. Wow, this really makes sense. Of course it makes sense. It's the most broken item in Dota. <sighs> Took fucking six months to nerf it. But we made it this far. Thank you, Ice Frog. No longer provides Archer Aura. Movement and attack speed of Necro units increased with the same amount as the Aura provided. It had a 5, 7, 9 attack speed aura and a 5, 7, 9 percent movement speed aura. It was pretty strong. Attack damage type changed from piercing to hero and damage amount adjusted such that the net effect is minus 70, uh, minus 57 percent versus creeps, minus 10 percent versus buildings and plus 26 percent versus heroes. So the item is being changed from a buy it on every hero farming item to you should buy it on heroes that use it against heroes. So you should buy it on heroes that have the ability to kill. Okay, let's move on to the next item. One of my favorites, Kizu Helm. Uh, no longer provides a damage and region aura. That's already a very big change. Dominate now also gives the creep a buff that provides plus 40 base damage, plus 12 HP region, and plus 4 mana region. Yeah, 40 base damage is a lot. Passive bonuses are now 6 armor, 6 HP reach, and 6 all stats. This item gives very nice stats for the person that has it. Like, a carry will farm so much faster with this item. Or anyone who has this item will farm a lot faster. I've got a feeling that this is a farming item, but what do I know? I would say that Vlad's is nerf. Dominator, I have a hard read on. I, I would say for most heroes, it's a nerf. For some heroes, it's a buff, and it's not really a team item anymore. This is more of a farming tool now. This item gives no stats. Items that give no stats, like, they only end up really, like, helping your team. Drums. I looked at this yesterday, and I was like, wow, best item of the patch. So, crown, uh, drums now requires a crown, a sage mask, a windlace, and a recipe. This has got to be one of the best build-ups in Dota. Windlace is a great item. Everybody wants to have a windlace. Um... Everybody wants to have a Sage Mask, and Crown is great, it gives all stats, like, you can't complain about any of these items. It no longer provides a 20 attack speed aura, so the 20 AoE attack speed, it's gone. Um, it gives you 6 all stats, which is great, it used to give you 4 all stats, and it's really cheap, it's a four, 1475 gold item, last patch drums was like 1900. Um, okay, ax attack speed bonus increased from 35 to 45, remember that the item lost the 20 attack speed aura. So you don't have it passively. When you use the active though, you gain 10 you gain 10 attack speed. So overall, compared to the last patch usage, you have 10 less attack speed, and you gain 1% active move speed. But you can have it way faster. The buildup is better. If you hold the drums, you gain mana region and two more stats. So that is pretty good. I think this is very strong. Like drums, drums to me, out of these items so far, by far the best. Blade Mail now has a 500 gold recipe instead of using Robe of the Magi. No longer grants plus 8 int, so you lose some damage. Armor bonus increased. Oh, one bonus armor again. Now has a passive component that returns 20 plus 20% 20 of the attack damage. Active return damage reduced from 100 to 80%. So it's kind of like Vessel in the last patch, you know, even if you didn't use it, it has some effect, which is kind of cool. So when you use it, it's still the same. Actually, when you use it, it's a buff, because it's going to be 100%, but plus 20 when they hit you. But if they only hit you with magic damage, then it's actually worse, because you will only return 80% of magic damage. Like, this thing won't apply if they're just hitting you with spells. So it's worse against spellcasters, which is kind of good in my opinion. This item is broken against spellcasters. Like, I've played my fair share of Queen of Pain's last patch into Blade Mail, and it feels horrible. I kind of like this change, but we'll have to see. Blitz Knuckles. It's a new basic item. It costs a thousand gold and provides 35 attack speed. I feel like this item, it has to be a good, like, standalone item on some heroes until you upgrade it later, or you just have it until late game where you sell it. Like, Slark. Slark Blitz Knuckles sounds kind of good to me. Terror Blade sounds good to me. 
like anti mage after fury i i don't quite know yet but i feel like this item will see some play monkey king bar it now requires blitz knuckles instead of quarter staff so it's a slightly more expensive 125 the damage from Monk MKB is reduced by 10, that's the damage you lose from the quarter staff, but you gain 25 attack speed, which is the attack speed difference from this item to quarter staff. I'm pretty sure that this is a buff to MKB, and I hate that this happened, because MKB was the most sleeper item of the last patch. Uh, items, I'm just gonna show you guys something. Yeah, let's say you play Wind Ranger against a Terra Blade. This is a 30 armor hero, okay? That's gonna be like 32 armor hero. But now I, I have MKB, and I don't care about his armor if you have MKB because you deal magic damage. But you also don't care if he has BKB because it goes through BKB. So even though this guy has 32 armor and magic immunity, look at this. The damage is, like, just look at the difference of the damage. If you don't have MKB, you deal like 11 damage. Look at this. If you have MKB and you have the bonus damage, the bonus damage is you go from 11 to 19. You gain 8 damage, you deal 8 more damage to him while gaining 42 damage yourself. But when you proc this fucking, this MKB, dude, a Wind Ranger with an MKB alone could kill like a 4 slaughter Terra Blade if he just gets to hit him like this. Even if he's BKB'd, it makes no difference. This is a guy that's magic immune and has 30 armor. This item is incredibly good it was already incredibly good last patch i don't know why it, it's getting buffed i think mkb is going to be one of the strongest items this patch like after reading this so far drums mkb and this blitz knuckles item look really strong orchid mana region is reduced by 1.5 that's the sage mask intelligence is reduced from 25 to 20 that um wow Wow, 3,400 gold is so little. I'm putting Orchid in the category of MKB and drums. This item seems very strong. This means... I can't write Bloodthorn in this. I can't. You can't search for Bloodthorn. This makes Bloodthorn a lot better too. Okay. Echo Saber, slow is now only applied by real heroes. If it doesn't work on Monkey King, this hero got a very big nerf. Oh my god, it actually doesn't work. Did I cast it before I bought the Echo Saber? So it doesn't actually. Oh my goodness, this is horrible. Why did he deserve this? What? That is horrible. So it doesn't work on his eggs either. Oh my god, this is horrible. Oh my god, it's so expensive. It has a recipe still. Oh my god, this I I don't know. Is this item even good? I guess some heroes have it nicer this way, like Slark. Slark can go Echo, Shadow Blade, and then suddenly it's a Silver Edge. I feel like Null Talisman is the best out of these three now. Null Talisman and Raven are definitely the best and Bracer is the worst. That's how I see it so far. You, there's definitely scenarios where you buy Wraith Bands on non-Agi heroes. Why is there so many pictures of Kaya? Why didn't they just put it all in one? No longer provides spell, life seal, amplification. Now provides spell, life seal, amplification. What? Did Sanj ever help you get... What? Whatever, I don't fucking understand. Now provides 24% spell lifesteal. So if you buy Octarine, Kaya helps you. Does Kaya build into Octarine now? No, it doesn't. Now provides 30% spell lifesteal amplification, spell lifesteal amplification, spell lifesteal amplification. This item gives magic resistance. Now provides 10% magic resistance, magic resistance, magic resistance. That's pretty good. Interiors seem to be pretty good this patch, huh? Voodoo Mask. New base item which gives you Spell Lifesteal. Costs 900 gold. But Spell Lifesteal is pretty underwhelming. Just wanna throw that out there. Spell Lifesteal stuff is usually underwhelming. Let's say I'm hitting two heroes. 40. You heal like 110. Instead of... 70. Well, I know, kinda interesting. I don't know if people will come up with shit like this. Not quite sure what to make of it, but 
Blood Zone is definitely a better item. Holy Locker can now target allied units with their magic stick active. I think this is really cool. I was hoping that Holy Locket would get some sort of um, some sort of usage with the stick. Because you have this 20 stick and it's like, oh, I use 20 stick on myself. But now you can actually use it on your allies. I think that is pretty cool. Battle Fury now requires Claymore instead of Mithra Hammer, so it's 200 gold cheaper. The damage is reduced by 5, the mana region is reduced by 0.5. Isn't this the old Battle Fury? No recipe? Satanic has a 500 gold recipe. Thank you. I hate Satanic. I hate Satyr's Resistance. I am surprised, actually. They didn't do anything to Satyr's Resistance. I just realized. That's very annoying. Because Satyr's Resistance is... It's dumb. Spirit Vessel no longer has a heal reduction aura. Uh-oh. Soul release region increase. So when you... Like, healing people with Vessel doesn't feel so bad anymore. It's like somebody asks you, hey, can you heal me? Throw me a Vessel charge, and you're like, no, I don't wanna. Buy a salve, asshole. So, so the DPS is up by 10 when you use enemy HP region reduction increased. So when you use it, it's 10% more. The reduction is back to 10%. But you lost a 20% aura, so it's less. The heal reduction is less, the DPS is higher. So that's a nerf to the item. Because you don't have the... You don't affect everyone. Like, if you play against Chen, Hand of God, you don't reduce the healing. You don't have charges, you don't reduce the healing. I really like how it was last. Shiva's Guard, Freezing Aura now applies a 25 heal reduction. The, the aura, not when you affect them, but the aura. Reduces the attack rate of all enemies by 45 and all heals, regeneration and lifesteal. I thought it's just heal. So heal reduction also counts in lifesteal. It's all heals, regeneration and lifesteal. So it's health region, heals from dazzle and lifesteal. Huh. Wow, this item... This item is, was already very good. You have an active that deals 200 damage and slows them. You have a passive that lowers their attack speed. And the passive now, on top of reducing their attack speed, lowers their healing, health region, and lifesteal. Heart of Tarask. It no longer provides plus 10 health region nor heal region amp. Thank you. It now passively provides 1% health region. 1% health region. So you, lo you lost 10 health region and health region amp, but you gain 1% passive health region. I mean, if you stay alive long in a fight, the item might be better, because you're healing more passively, which you didn't before. Or, well, you did heal a little more pass uh, passively earlier, but not so much. But it's more expensive, and it gives you 100 less overall health. Smoke cost reduced by 30. Ooh, that's nice. Replenish cooldown. I think that's nice. Sentries are like too hard to come by. Tome is way cheaper. 50%. Okay. Pickup range for mangles is changed so they can't get like... They can't like drop and you need to send your dumb courier. Now it has a minimap icon. Okay, that's cool. No longer drops if another consumable item has dropped in the same tier. So you, you can't get like... You can't get mango tree and royal jelly. Active damage reduced. Thank you. I talked about this many times, way too strong. No longer drops, blah. Attack range increased. Why? It's already such... It's so stupid. It's a 12 damage, 3 armor item that gives you 50 attack range on a melee. Like, why? Movement speed reduced by 5, armor reduced by 1. Cool. Night vision increased... I feel like this item is very horrible. Maybe now that they're spell amp, spell lifesteal, maybe it's better. I like the fact that it gives you night vision. I think it's an underrated aspect of the item. Philosopher's Stone, damage reduction, minus 5, so it's a buff. Essence Ring, nerfed, thank you. Clumsy Net, nerfed, th I think Clumsy Net is the best tier 2 item, it actually changes the game. You lose 1 all set and 50 range, so it's not that big. Greater Fairy Fire, no longer drops if another consumable item has dropped in the same tier. Damage increased by a bit. Repair kit. No longer drops if another consumable item has been dropped. So they just don't want you to have items that go away. Like, you can use repair kit charges and fairy fire charges and suddenly you don't have... You've lost two tier three items. Lost. Repair kit now is a 60 second cooldown. Oh, thank god. Repair kit tier four. Repair kit tier four. Repair kit thrown. Haha. <laughs> Health region increased. Dude, this item is super nice to just hold on your hero. Guys, you, if you have a repair kit, consider holding it. 25 HP region is a lot. If you just, con like, 
think about it as heal in a fight. If you're not full HP and you hold this item for four seconds, that's a hundred heal. That's a lot. Like it makes your effective HP a lot higher unless you get hundred to zeroed. Spider legs cooldown increased by two. I can take it. Fixed it, granting permanent blood. cooldown reduced. Quiver is a strong item. Orb of re orb of <laughs> I was about to say orb of reduction. Orb of destruction minus one armor, but the slow is increased by five percent. The slow does not go through BKB if I am not mistaken. It's very good though. Mindbreaker cooldown reduced. Sure. Titan sliver. The damage is increased. The star resistance is reduced. Thank you, Ice Frog. Well done. Some good changes in the neutral items. Paladin Sword, higher damage, but 1% less lifesteal and 3% less healing amp. Small nerf, which is good. Princess Knife, cooldown reduced from 12 to 10. Not sure if he needed that. Now has a minimum 200 range blink. Like you could blink on top of yourself if you got luck. Or whatever. Max range reduced from 450 to 400. Okay. Illusionist incoming damage increased from 150 to 200. Thank you. This item was too good. They buffed Havoc Hammer again. 50 more radius. And 50 more base damage. Dude, this item deals so much damage. It deals 275 plus 1 times your strength. Like on a Centaur, this is some this is a 400 HP nuke. While giving you 48 damage on a strength hero on a 10 second cooldown that also pushes them away. Magic Lamp, so you, it gives you 400 health base, and then it gives you 400 health heal. It's like a... Honestly, this might just be... This is just a better A on disc. Pirate Hat, no longer steals gold on kills. Can be activated to dig for bounty runes with 100% success rate. <laughs> uh, how dumb. Always finds a bounty rune every 40 seconds. Bounty runes are strong in the late game when you have this item. Like... At the time when you get this item, bounty runes give a lot of gold. Okay, um, overall thoughts, I really like this patch. A lot of item changes, which are going to be very big. Um, I already talked about my winners earlier. Another thing to take away. Tier 2 towers are very important with the outpost. Outposts can no longer be stolen by the other team until they kill one of your tier 2 towers. Also, just to put it into perspective real quick, what does this mean in case you guys haven't thought about it more? I'll give you guys my big brain right now and give you some, some closing thoughts on the patch. So kills mean more, both in XP and, go and gold wise. Uh, you gain a bit more passive gold. Stacking is a bit better. What all this means with the camps, I'm not sure yet. Creep skipping, definitely worse. Courier kills give you less. Um, last hitting is different in towers. Uh, there's some stuff. The zoo is closing out right now with the necrobook. Uh, let's look at what this outpost stuff means just really, really quickly. If the enemy team has control of your jungle, they cannot take this outpost. So even though they've killed this tower, and they start farming, and they start farming inside of your jungle, it doesn't matter. Like, they're not that safe here. Why? Because you can constantly, you could constantly be TPing on this, on this place. Because they cannot take it unless this tower is dead. If Radiant wants to take Roshan, they cannot just take this outpost, and then Dire need to like run all the way across the map to come here, no. If this tower stands, Dyer can just mass TP on this outpost and take back their jungle or contest the Roshan fight. So if you're Radiant and you want to take Rosh, you need Dyer to be out of position or you need to take this tower and this tower and now take the outpost because otherwise Dyer can just come here and contest. No, 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 no. Oh, no. It's any tier 2? Outpost can no longer be so by the other team until they kill. Oh, uh, I'm stupid. Any tier 2 tower? So any t Whichever first tier 2 tower they go for, defend that shit. Defend it with your life. Don't give them a tier 2 tower. Forget what I said in the last minutes. Understand the idea that outposts are strong. Roshan is strong. Dyer has better Roshan control now. Hmm. Like if you're Dyer and you push this bot tower, Radiant can backstab you. If you're Dyer, you push this tower, Dyer can backstab If you're Radiant pushing this tower, Dyer can backstab you. So with that said, that is kind of the patch review. I don't know how exactly this patch will shape out to be. Because 
to be fair, it's a really big patch and there's a lot of big changes. A lot of items that need to be tested, a lot of map stuff, you can't take outposts, kills are worth more, yada yada. Think the game will be faster, you might see an increase of intelligence heroes, you're gonna see more cloaks being picked up. You're probably gonna see more drums, more orchids, mech, Scotty, MKB, the Splits Knuckle item. Looks pretty good. Yeah, so I'll upload this to my YouTube. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys another time. Thanks for watching.